Yay! Yay! Whoa. I was ready. And you did the, like, the sassy turn. <laughs> the, the, like the I just hair and to make sure moved. you were still here. I'm still here. Uh, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm ready to go. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 288. We are up there. <laughs> it's true. It's very much the truth. I'm excited about tonight's episode because it's rare that we get to talk to someone that owns one of the brands that not only that we enjoy using all the time, but is also making waves in the space uh, with trail running. We had uh, Sally from Wazelle years ago come mm-hmm. on the show and talk to us about yeah. what it's like to create that kind of company. Uh, but tonight we get to talk with Monica DeVries, who co-founded Rabbit, um, which is this really cool brand that's kind of uh, really grown in the last few years and made again, waves in the trail running space and running space. Uh, We're going to talk to her about what it's like to create a brand, how you have to go about navigating the space, why she created it. Uh, But also she's, I I put in the title of this video, Mountain Crusher, because (laughs) when we first met her, she was in the midst of running Cascade Crest 100 in 2016. And it's just, uh, we got to know her during that day and then races after that, most recently at Heavily in 100K, uh, Monica's just a badass ultra runner. And so we'll definitely be talking to her a lot about that and what brought her into the sport, what keeps her in the sport. Uh, so tonight's show is going to be awesome. I'm actually really excited about it. Mm-hmm. Monica DeVries will be joining us here in just a second. Sit back, relax, and welcome to Ginger Runner Live. Here we go. Ginger Runner. Yay! Yay! I was trying to catch you off guard. You knew it was coming. <laughs> I was trying to listen here, but I'm in the chat room here. Yep, yep it's true. you in my peripheral vision, mm, seeing what you're up to. You are a master of the <laughs> multitask. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 288. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy Mondays to spend a little bit of it with us, especially during the holidays. We know a lot of holiday stuff is yeah. going on right now. People are out shopping. People are... Doing Christmas parties. Christmas parties. Cutting trees down. Cutting trees down. <laughs> what else? <laughs> sitting on Santa. Sitting on Santa. Wow. Uh, I hope you're spending your Monday sitting on Santa. This show is it's no, nothing compared to that. Um, tonight's going to be fun. We have a fantastic guest. It is the co-founder of Rabbit. Uh, if you're familiar, uh, they actually just had a product that made my gear of the year uh, list last week. Um, my video that will be coming out later this week also has something rabbit in it. Yeah. So it's a new company that came out a few years ago making running products. So like apparel based items. And I am always really curious about this as someone who's been oh boy. reviewing gear since gear since the very beginning of since the very beginning of time, um, since the beginning of my running career, really getting into gear and figuring out how it's made, where it's made, what makes things work and what doesn't. Uh, but we're going to talk to Monica DeVries today to, uh, all about why she started Rabbit. What is it about it that sets it apart? But also her journey, because she's an ultra runner extraordinaire. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met her for the first time at Cascade Crest in 2016 while she was running mid-run. it. Mid-run. Yes. Mid-run. Uh, all smiles. It was really cool to talk to her back then. And she has just done so much in the running world. Uh, so it would be really cool to talk to her about what it takes to run ultras, balancing the training, the racing, and family. the business, and family. Yeah. So uh, really cool opportunity to talk to a founder of a, of a brand that's definitely making waves in the in the scene. But it's not just myself, and it's not just our guest who we'll introduce here in just a second. We are also joined by... What's up, friends? You. Kim Dejima Newberry here, <laughs> as usual. If you're new to the show, welcome. We are a live show. Our guests will be joining us in just a second. And because we are live... Feel free to jump into the chat room and uh, ask a question to our wonderful guest, Monica. Yep. Um, I'll be pulling questions throughout the hour. We've got a lot of lively audience members tonight, so this is going to be great. Uh, Before we introduce our guests, of course, at the top of every show, there are some individuals we like to thank for helping make this show possible. Uh, It is our Patreon subscribers, those who support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month plus all the way to the top. They are the reason we're able to do reviews, films, live shows week after week, month after month. Uh, it is it is them. It is you. So we appreciate that very much. Three individuals in particular at that top tier that just go the extra mile. We can't thank them enough. So we like to shout them out at the beginning of every show as well. Chris Lee, 
out of Hong Kong. He has an organization called Trailblazer that uh, basically showcases all the trails in the Hong Kong area. So if you find yourself visiting there or racing there, reach out to Chris and his organization. They'll show you the landscape and show you everything you need to know about trail running in Hong Kong. Uh, Rick Bjarnison and his team at CheekyMonkeyMedia.ca. They are a web design company. Uh, they work with clients of all sizes from huge corporations, global corporations to small fry like myself. They did the ginger small runner. Fry. Small fry. Uh, <laughs> they did the gingerrunner.com website. Rick himself is an ultra runner, just total badass. So shout out to them. And finally, Brian Sands. Um, excuse me. Bodie's office. You, Brian Sands choke you up. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, uh, we love him on this show. He's just a fantastic, inspirational dude. He ran his first marathon, uh, then trained for his first 50K. He's training for even bigger stuff, uh, has just been one of those really, really inspiring stories and a regular viewer of our show and supporter of our show. And uh, today he and I were talking, there is going to be Ginger Miss, for those who maybe are familiar. Ginger Miss is around the corner. It is mm -hmm. this weekend, and we're, we're going to talk about it a little bit at the end of the show and even more in the after show tonight. Yes. But Brian is, I, I'm going to say, taking it to the next level. There is going to be some incredible prizes provided to our winners this year, mm -hmm. uh, Patreon winners specifically, because he wants to get back to the community. Uh, but Brian is going above and beyond. We're going to talk about that in the after show tonight. So huge shout out to those individuals for helping us do what we do. Without further ado, coming to us from, I'm going to guess, somewhere in California, in beautiful California, because uh, that's where their headquarters are located. Uh, it Maybe is close to where Gus came to us from. For those who are familiar, our dog Gus, also, we adopted him from uh, uh, the Cavalier Rescue Organization, which is also very close to Rabbit headquarters. <laughs> so we have uh, a connection to this region, but... I guess, is it technically South Southern California? It would be Southern California. It's not middle California. <laughs> Without further ado, <laughs> let me welcome our guest, Monica DeVries. Yay. Hello. Hello. How are hello. You? Um, <laughs> I'm doing great here. And it was sunny today in sunny Santa Barbara, California. It hasn't been we, sunny as much no. as I've been thinking. <laughs> we had Seattle uh, weather all weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> so did we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked but it was a little sunny bit today. It was. It's great that the sun is back. It sounds like California is kind of back to what Cali is known for. Uh, before the show, we both looked at each other and what we were wearing, and I, it's just awesome. Um, I love mm -hmm. the uh, what Justin is doing with Brave Like Gabe and this whole foundation and uh, in Gabe's honor. And we had him on the show recently, so mm -hmm. uh, just a quick moment to recognize that. Yeah. Without any emailing back or forth or anything like that, Monica is rocking the Brave Like Gabe shirt and. We got the running on hope. And correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, but Rabbit is doing a collaboration. No, I it was it was really cool. I met Justin at Havelina, um, right? And I, at this year, and um, yeah, we just connected, and I we just kind of went back and forth, and I just begged him. I was like, if I send you some gear, can you get the logo put on there for me? So nice. Um, that's how that happened. Yeah, I love it. Um, I feel like there's just so much that we're going to be able to talk about today, Monica, because <laughs> you do so much for the community. You have this brand that's obviously becoming more and more well-known uh, for quality products, just really fun stuff. Um, you have some of the fastest people in the sport right now on your team that run in your gear. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see that team change every year and like get faster and faster and the, and the, the names keep popping up. But you are an ultra runner yourself you've been doing this for, for quite some time. When did you get into the sport? What really drew you to ultra running and why? Like really, what was your sort of connection to it? Yeah. So it's pretty funny. I actually, you would not know this. My first, I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't My, know okay. So I, I did road stuff and, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm getting older. And then after I had my second kid, I wasn't getting faster on the road. And, you know, kind of became frustrated. And, but also, um, we have a pretty um, robust trail running community here in Santa Barbara and just started connecting with, um, more of the trail running community versus the road and sort of just got hooked. Mm. And then, then my hubby started doing, he did his first 50 and I was like, I will never ever do that. I will, I will not go that distance. So actually my first 50, DK was at the North Face in 
I think 2014, the oh, year wow. it was okay. And so I, you did the 50 miler that year. I did. Yeah. I went, cause I had done the 50 K in 2012. It was stormy. It was muddy. It was terrible. And I was like, I want to go back and run the 50 miler in 2014. Yeah. So I remember, uh, cause that year my husband also did the 50 miler and we were walking back to catch the buses and you and Kim were right in front of us, and I was all giddy because I was like, oh, <laughs> my God, there's the ginger runner. <laughs> That's funny because we heard you say that, and we were like, Ugh, yeah, who is this that? annoying person? <laughs> That's wild. So yeah, you did. So, okay. So that was so your that first was 50K? 20, yeah, 2014. And still, even after that, I was like, mm, I, I'm good with that. Yeah. And then, um, husband and my good friends, they kept bumping up. And so then I was finally talked into doing um, my first 50 miler for my 40th birthday. Um, and that was at the Vermont 50. Oh, and cool. it was just, it was incredible. Yeah. And so kind of since then, I, I guess I, then I, let's see, I did, did I do a hundred K? I don't even think I did a hundred K before my first hundred. Wow. And my first hundred with Cascade Crest. Now, why would one pick that as their first? <laughs> <laughs> anybody, um, anybody on this else, live uh, stream have any answers what's, for us? What's weird is I look back and I'm like, why did I choose that as my first? It's it's <laughs> one of those. What the hell am I thinking? I know, but um, um, go ahead. Yeah, so that was, and then after that, it was just kind of, you know, one after the other. What can I squeeze in the calendar and? Um, just enjoy, you know, it's just the community. It's mm. just so fun to go to these events and connect. And um, as you guys know, just think the community is so incredible. It's everything. Like, it's everything about the sport. And and what I love about uh, when we ran into you in 2016, it was the first time that we met you. I don't even know if we had heard of Rabbit at that point. Cause how new was Rabbit at that point? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is another good story. So <laughs> my husband was crewing. And I think I knew you guys were going to be there because, I mean, I follow, you know, all your stuff. And and I was like, okay, if if um, the ginger runner is there and you see him, you have to give him this hat. So I don't know if you remember that. It's, I think oh, it was at the first aid. <laughs> uh -huh. I get to the first aid station <laughs> and I'm like, to my friend Deanna, I'm like, oh my gosh, the ginger runner is here and he's got the hat, the rabbit hat on. <laughs> um, yeah. So we had just, before that, we had just launched like at the beginning of that summer wow. of 23. So it's been three and a half years ago. I mean, it's, what's kind of crazy. And what I think, what I wanted to get to more in this show is just growth because obviously yes. with ginger runner, we've been trying to grow ginger runner at a, a very consistent sort of like slow I almost call it glacial pace because <laughs> I felt like if we were to get too big, too fast, we'd, I wouldn't know what to do. And right now, everything's been a very consistent growth. And we have this incredible audience that comes back every Monday to watch the shows yeah. and stuff like that. Rabbit took off. And I remember that day. I forget if we were walking by. I think we might have been in the car. I feel like I think we were in the car and he came up he and, came and knocked on the on the hood. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He didn't. I, I think we might have been in the car. We might have been walking between the the aid station i remember getting the hats and thinking, oh like i haven't heard of this brand yet yeah and he kind of mentioned they're out of, you know you guys are out of santa barbara mm -hmm. and i was like oh i just I, we hadn't even moved up from california no, we were living yet. down there still. we were living mm -hmm. down there so it was oh wow santa barbara like that's an hour outside of la i live in la and it was kind of this bond of the southern california company and you know seeing the product and stuff and I don't know. It was something really neat. And then knowing that one of the co-founders was running the race was another sort of standout. It wasn't just a company that's like, let's make product and sell it to the people in the sport. It's like, let's participate in the sport because that's what we are doing. Like, we love that. So, right. Um, so, yeah, let's let's start there. What why did you start Rabbit and what was where did the seed come in? Like, where did where did that plant start growing? What was the reasoning behind all of it? Yeah, so I'll I'll kind of date myself here a little bit, but um, I've been in the industry for a really long time now. I started um, I started with Adidas. I was doing just sales. I was this twenty two year old girl driving my car through the Midwest, mm. calling on all these stores, um, and I did sales and marketing, kind of the whole spectrum. Um, 
the whole gamut within my territory. And then, um, anyway, I moved on, I moved to Portland and then, um, and then we ended up moving to Santa Barbara in 2003 and I worked for Deckers who is located here as well. Um, and then we also started Santa Barbara running, which is the local running store because there was not one here. Right. Um, and so I was with Deckers for, I think almost seven years. Um, and I had had my first kid, he was eight months and I was just, I was traveling like 90% of the time. And, um, you know, I came back from this 14 day Asia trip to my eight month old baby. And, um, and I'm, you know, I'm like, I think it's time to move on. And this is just not at this time in my life. Um, you know, I, I wanted to be with my baby more and be more present. And so I went and helped Joe with the running store and, and we actually, it's, you talk about having Sally on the show. We were one of the bit, the first um, running stores to get on uh, with Wazelle in a pretty big way. Cause wow. I was super excited about that. You know, as a running store owner, I was like, wow, something new and exciting to talk to the customer about. Um, that's different than the big footwear brands apparel. And so Anyway, we, you know, we were always looking for like new and interesting things to sell in the running shop. And then anyway, we started this uh, women's race team through the store and Jill Deering, who is the co-founder of Rabbit, um, she was on this race team and, you know, Jill, Jill's an attorney. So she's, you know, she, she came to me as an athlete frustrated with apparel options and it was just super interesting because at the time I, my creative juices were, you know, I was like, oh, what else can I do? And then also just as a, as a running store owner, just being frustrated with our options. I mean, it was literally like the sto- the clothes came in the store, they went on the sales rack. Like that was just the cycle. Wow. And so she was like, would it be crazy if we started this running apparel brand? <laughs> and I was like, actually, no, it wouldn't be. The timing is perfect. And, you know, luckily for me, I had that background and expertise and just uh, product design, product development, and just sort of being able to navigate, you know, all of those waves um, Mm. that, you know, just a normal runner probably, I mean, they could probably figure it out, of course, but um, I sort of had all of that knowledge uh, that I could make it happen pretty quickly. So I kind of the first criteria, I was like, I'm not doing this in Asia because I'm not going to do these 14 day trips and leave my kids. Um, so we found a factory in LA and we quickly started making prototypes and, and then just it snowballed. (laughs) And it's like, I love, I love this stuff because as I, again, I'm going to, I love gear. I love gear so much. Uh, for weird reasons. Um, <laughs> I, w- I want to point out also that this is not, uh, Rabbit is not sponsoring the show. There, right. There's none of that going on. I'm just fascinated by startups and technology that is going on with gear in the sport. So I love gear first and foremost. And when I heard that you guys did it this way, stitch and sew through Los Angeles and through uh, like their downtown uh, um the garment district and and finding a manufacturer in Los Angeles. That's what really made me mm-hmm. fascinated as someone who has always dreamt about designing running gear and, and whether from shoes to apparel or any of that. Even like thinking about taking those first steps, like even for the little bit of merch that we've done is like really intimidating and it feels really vast and I guess just completely (laughs) and completely like we know as much of about apparel as putting it on, knowing textures, knowing fits, knowing Knowing what we like, what we we, obviously knowing what you like is one of the most important criteria in in apparel. But there are uh, elements of design like you need to know how to design and design for bodies and different shapes and having connections to local factories and stuff like that. So is that the knowledge that you brought to the table and like how? How long did it take for for both of you to sort of go to take that initial leap of did you have to get seed investors? Did you have to just pull money out of your own bank accounts to make this happen? Was it a leap of faith? Going from a shop owner to that is huge. Oh, it's huge. And so for the actually, I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, yeah, like the design fees 
can get pretty expensive, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the actual like sampling, you would be surprised. Like for first prototypes, it's no Jill and I funded that piece of it. Um, it's, it's not what you would expect. I mean, it's pretty reasonable. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you're still taking, you know, money out of your own bank, but, um, yeah. So once we got to a good place where the samples were, we then started, okay, yeah, like let's start taking this serious and, you know, talking to investors and, um, and then also, I'm not sure if you know, but we did end up going the Kickstarter route. Mm -hmm. That was more, it wasn't, it was more to get the, to kickstart the marketing really versus at that time we had the funds secured. But let me tell you, I, I still wish there was more information on fundraising. I mean, it, it's just, um, I definitely, I would say that is the biggest part of the business that I'm still learning about (laughs) and want to learn more about. Um, yeah, it's because now, like once you get to this place, I mean, just the amount of you know, money you need is, it can get quite quite scary at times. (laughs) I, I mean, as someone that's on more of the, like the digital media front end of things, it every month, like uh, every month, Kim and I kind of look at each other and go, is this it? And that's, that's part of the fear of this. And I can only imagine in the apparel and uh, brand industry like that, it's to an a whole other degree of will our brand still be here? And I want to talk about sort of like the future of Revit and how you guys have right. grown so much uh, here in a couple of minutes. But of course, we are live. We are live with Monica DeVries, the co-founder of Rabbit, uh, as well as a mountain crusher, as I put in the, <laughs> in the uh, video title there, because I think that's putting it lightly. She's out there crushing ultras all the time. Um, but we do have a live audience and live questions. So Kim, what do we got? Uh, yeah, first, just like a couple comments right off the start. We have a lot of people praising the easy tea, which um, if you haven't tried the easy tea again, this is not sponsored. This is not an ad, but it is <laughs> genuinely one of our favorite shirts. And there's a lot of people in the chat room that are like easy tea, easy tea, easy tea. We and don't <laughs> get anything for saying what, what we say about the easy teas, Monica. Um, <laughs> but it made, it made my gear of the year list because like... I don't go watch my gear of the year video. It does a much better explanation of like why I chose that piece of gear, but it's the long sleeve easy tee specifically for me. Cause at a $50 price point, when it comes to long sleeves and comfortable, it, it's it. Uh, I, you know, I have Lululemon tops. I have uh, expensive men sort of athleisure apparel mm-hmm. tops. Um, nothing compares to the price point, the comfort <laughs> and the usability of that top. So yeah, yeah. easy tee is like one of the softest materials. It's crazy. A uh, question from John in the chat room. John says, any thoughts about recycling used clothes for new products similar to what something like Patagonia does? No, I think that's, it's just beautiful what Patagonia does. And we just admire so much of just their initiatives. And definitely, I think one of the, our brand initiatives going forward is like, how can we, you know, just in terms of like the environment and sustainability and start tracking that more and just, uh, yeah, definitely like, bringing that more as part of our, our products that we're launching. And um, we have some cool stuff launching, uh, in 2020. Um, we, we will start using some wool, um, in one of the tops that we range. And then one of our, uh, light shell jackets that we're using is going to be using a uh, recycled coffee grind. So, you know, for us, I mean, gosh, I would love to do this, you know, full circle, you know, where your product starts and ends. <laughs> and, um, but for us, kind of, we have to take baby steps. But it's definitely, you know, in terms of who we are as a brand and where we want to go, that's definitely part of it. Let's get to um, one more live question there, babe. Yeah, a great question from Randy in the chat room. Randy says, fashion and styles change so fast. Year to year, there is always a new hot item or design. How do you go about in staying with what the new trends are, uh, see what people are wearing at races, et cetera? Yeah. I mean, I think the cool thing is, is like, we are, we try to be as out in the community as much as possible. Also, everyone that works at Rabbit, all of our athletes, I mean, we're using this, we're grinding. Like we're our, you know, our best own best critics Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to designing and using the product. Um, So we, I, we leave it to our designers to come up with more of like, 
the trends in terms of the colors and things like that, that will be coming through the pipeline. But in terms of like function, um, you know, we keep that to the feedback we get on a daily basis from our own consumers and then our athletes. That's awesome. Uh, I want to point out uh, just for the live stream, people who are watching currently live, uh, Monica, you froze. So the video is frozen, but we can hear you okay. just fine. So I apologize okay. about the freeze frame that it is just <laughs> like you mid word, but we can totally hear you. And I know it'll click okay. back to video here in a second. It always does. Uh, so I kind of want to take a couple steps back because you mentioned uh, the Santa Barbara running company, the the retail store that you started. I am curious if we're back uh, already. Yes. Uh, Monica's back to, <laughs> to moving. Um, what is that space like right now? Because everything, obviously I could, I could talk for hours about how everything's moving online or, uh, how has that shop changed? Uh, was there something in that shop atmosphere that made you go, I do want to start rabbit because maybe this is a new venture that we can pursue. Um, is retail changing? Is the space changing? Uh, what's sort of the, the shape of the industry there? Yeah, I mean, I think so. As I mentioned, I've been in this space for quite a long time, mm. and you never, you never heard of new brands coming in this space. I mean, this is like, you know, an old school. I, I mean, I'll be blunt, man's world. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like men running these brands, men working in these companies. Um, you know, the same kind of footwear brands, and the footwear brands made the apparel, and that's just sort of how it was. But I, I mean, the tide is definitely shifting. And I would say in just in the last few few years on the footwear side, I mean, you've seen, you're seeing all this excitement with Hoka, with Ultra, with On, being able to come and disrupt this space, which is really exciting, you know, I think as a consumer, but obviously as a retailer, because we've got new stories to talk to about the customer, um, with the customer. Um, and I think now the same thing is happening with apparel. I mean, i one of the, cause we were at the running event last week in Austin mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, you know, it, it, this struck me one of the, um, actually he's out of Canada. He told me, he goes, we want to buy footwear from footwear brands and we want to buy apparel from apparel brands. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think in, you know, in the past you just, in the apparel space, there weren't the options to be able to do that. You know, you had to buy apparel from footwear brands. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that's really exciting. And, um, we, we really see, you know, the running shops embracing that and they're excited about it because it has been, it's like apparel's an afterthought, apparel's hard, we can't sell apparel. I mean, that's just sort of the recycled rebuttals, you know, you, we've been hearing for the last few years. Um, but I do think there is a shift happening there. I think, um, the running stores that are bringing these new stories, these new brands into their shops. And just continuing to create that experience for the consumer. They're the ones, you know, they're doing really well. And I think specialty, I, I don't see it going away at all. You know, I mean, there, that's what like, I mean, obviously I'm biased because I have a running store, but I mean, running stores, you know, are the heartbeat to, to running communities, you yeah. know? And, and so that's why, you know, for us at rabbit, like that channel is, we're super committed to it. And, um, you know, we're excited about the opportunity there. I Like, I couldn't agree more. It's been really interesting being someone who's uh, who does primarily mm -hmm. online social media based stuff, whether it's YouTube, uh, Instagram, all this sort of mm -hmm. stuff. That's kind of what we base right now. We're live on YouTube like this is what we do. Um, a lot of online based stuff. It has been really interesting to to use the online space for our business model and have people say like, oh, you, you know, uh, the retail shop is dead. Things are moving away from that and they're going online just like your business model. And every time I go to a running store uh, here locally in Seattle, there's great ones, whether it's uh, Brian Morrison's at Flea Feet or uh, Phil at Seven Hills. Like mm -hmm. there's many, many more as well, right. but they're always busy. They're always yep. helping customers. They have and community. They have community. Right. And it's been like, you can go shop <laughs> online all you want. That's not building a community. Uh, we've been very fortunate to build like a viewership community here and, and, and sort of a supportive community of runners around the world. But there's something amazing about going to a running store and seeing 20 mm -hmm. bodies that show up for a Wednesday at 7 p.m. to go run around the park because they're all there to support one another. It's really been cool to see that it's not going anywhere. 
and right. thriving, almost thriving to a point, right? No, for sure. Yeah. Is that is that what's going on in Santa Barbara? I know that. I mean, you have trail races there all the time, and and Santa Barbara Running Company is is a big part of a lot of that. Do you still see that core group of runners and that community through the shop? Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, even just with you know Santa Barbara's hundred thousand plus you know, people. Right. And it's, there's now like all these little micro groups popping up. Um, you know, so where we used to just have our kind of one training group through the store. Now you have Santa Barbara trail runners, you have, you know, I mean, everyone from, you know, people that run one time a month to a group now that's trying to, you know, that has qualified for the Olympic trial. So you have all these kind of micro groups popping up as well. But I think it, you know, that's everybody's social outlet as well. You know, um, these days it's kind of, it is like your own community within your community. <laughs> and so, yeah, so that's what we're seeing. I mean, we, we moved our store this year. Oh. Uh, yeah. We moved it to Montecito and we thought for sure we're, you know, there's going to be a hiccup in terms of our sales this year, just cause we're, we're moving. And actually, I mean, we're going to end up being up for the year, which we're, totally stoked about yeah Um, that's that's awesome yeah Um, yeah, so i mean we we see we see huge opportunities still that's fantastic uh kim go for it yeah we do have a lot of live questions i just wanted oh Oh, we we can hear you we can hear you you still hear us (laughs) yes yeah okay yeah excellent great uh we do have a lot of live questions uh i just want to tap into really quick um you mentioned uh a lot of running shoe and apparel companies being more like a man's world. And obviously you and Jill are female founders. I admire that. I look up to that. I think it's amazing. Have you guys come across any unique challenges Mm. uh, coming into the, this type of space as women? You know, it's super interesting because I've been reflecting a lot um, just, you know, the last month with everything that's sort of all the buzz happening within the industry and, I don't know. I'll say like, I feel like maybe I'm just one of the fortunate ones. You know, I was pretty competitive in high school and, you know, I had a wonderful coach. I never felt um, threatened. I never felt ashamed. Um, So I think through that phase of my life and then, you know, I always worked with men. I always had um, male bosses as I kind of navigated on the corporate side of the industry. And I always, very fortunate just to love and adore, um, you know, my previous bosses and just the men that I worked with. Um, so I do feel, you know, um, I feel very lucky on that front. I would say like with rabbit, same thing. I mean, I think Jill and I, um, we just feel very fortunate to just be embraced by the running community. Um, and by the industry as a whole, I, I feel like, you know, in an industry where people can sort of throw up their, (laughs) their guard and shield. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like we, um, feel very welcomed. I think, you know, in terms of like our athletes and ambassador, um, you know, I feel we've been supported there and that they feel supported. And no, I, I would say we, I don't, we haven't had any like things that I could think of that were upsetting. Um, you know, there's normal day-to-day stuff sometimes that you have to deal with, but just as as a whole, no. Has there been challenges in navigating personal opinions? <laughs> oh, we can still, yeah, we, we see and hear you. You let us know if you can see and hear us. Can you still see and hear us? Monica? She is frozen. Oh, oh wait. Uh-oh. Monica, can you hear us and see us? Hello. Hello. hello? I, I can. Hello, hello. Shoot. Can you not hear us at all? <laughs> no, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, a, nice yeah. Statement. We yeah. can see and hear you perfectly fine. Yeah. It's that's okay. the beauty of okay. uh, beauty of the internet, of course. Always. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was really curious, just kind of regard in regards to uh, personal opinions and and business. Has there been challenges in balancing the uh, I am Monica DeVries and I am Monica DeVries, co-founder of Rabbit? Like, has there been challenges in uh, creating this brand, people know you for this brand, but basically, uh, are you able to live two different lives or is it all kind of one encompassing, I guess? Yeah, it's a good, it's, that's a really good question. Um, 
because I'll be honest, like when Kim, you know, emailed me to come on, I'm just like, I don't, I'm just like this lady raising some kids and I started a business, <laughs> you know, and I like to run. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know so that's the beauty that's um, the beauty of this though yes. like that's exactly <laughs> I, if there's anything that our viewers can take away is that you can be a regular person with kids that likes to run and you can still start a new brand that sort of changes the space like that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah i mean and then you know again like reflecting i'm like it is pretty cool that like okay i'm a woman i get to start a company, I get to lead a group of people and I get to raise these kids at home and I get to go running. Like that's pretty kick ass, you know? Yeah. I love it. Uh, Kim, go for it. Um, and just to just one more thing, just regarding like being a female founder and wanting to, you obviously have this community of athletes that you support, whether it's the elites or the rad rabbits. Mm. Um, uh, can you talk about what you and Jill are doing to help support the women athletes uh, that are uh, under your brand as far as what you're doing with uh, supporting them through pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, all of, you know, our rabbit pros are the ones that are actually under a contract and we full on support them. Um, you know, if they, if they get pregnant under contract, absolutely 100%. You know, I, I think just, I mean, obviously Jill and I both have children. If you follow Jill on Instagram, I mean, you know, she, she's an incredible mother. I think it's, I would hope that it's just a given that, you know, if you come with us and, and you're <laughs> part of our brand, you understand that, that we support, uh, mothers, we support women, um, you know, and we're here to, um, you know, hopefully improve the sport in that way for them. I love it. Um, I know that we have a lot of live <laughs> questions here. I realize that Kim is being diligent <laughs> about asking her own questions, but also like pulling live questions from the chat room and stuff like that. I'll let you get to some of those. I think that's, uh, it's a good time for that. Uh, yeah. Aaron in the chat room says, I work in a startup as well, different industry, wondering what your biggest challenge has been and how you have met it. Um, God, that's a great question. I think, um, you always need more money than you think you need. <laughs> I mean, number one, number one for, uh, I mean, it's just, you do, you always need way more money than what you think. Um, I would say like that is a huge challenge. I think the other is just, um, you know, when you are a startup and you're hiring, um, and, you know, obviously, like making sure the people that you hire, you know, fill, you know, that, that those attributes and those competencies that you are looking for to, for your cultural, to fill your cultural values. Um, and then just, you know, I think it, I, to me, like that, one of the hardest things too is, is I think leading, leading these people. Like I, I think of them like my family and my children and, you know, you go to bed every night and you're like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm writing their paychecks. <laughs> you know, that's right. a huge burden. Um, it's a blessing <laughs> and a burden. Um, yeah. So I, I think like that, that's, I would say for us, I think like, I, I, I'm always like, also we're just, we're making running clothes. Like, <laughs> you know, at the end, like you have to like keep your emotions in check. Like at the end of the day, it's, yeah, we're doing all these incredible things, but like we are making running clothes. So when the going gets tough, like you just have to kind of tug it, you know, tug at yourself and pinch yourself and, and keep things in check. I think that's, you know, just keeping your emotions in check and keep, keeping the perspective, um, of what you're doing. And it's, there's, it's, there's always going to be hurdles every day. And, um, that's also, I feel like, you know, a good sign of a leader is just like, how do you handle those hurdles and how do you get over them and overcome them? Has there been 
because you, you, you've you grown fast. So in the last three, I mean, from an outsider's perspective, it seems now we go to races and you see rabbit on front of the pack, middle of the pack, back of the pack runners. But also not just trail and ultra. Not just like trail and ultra. And road and track as well. 100%. Have you seen this growth on your side of the business? And has it has it been overwhelming? Because growing a brand at an exponential rate, one, it could be exhausting. I know that like, you can only grow so fast so much and execute both quality of product uh, and like deliveries and, and all that sort of thing. So I'm curious, has it been overwhelming? Has it scaled at the rate at which you had hoped beyond that? What's what's that sort of like on the back end? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, like we've kept it. So I don't know, I won't bore everybody into like how the timelines work, but like for wholesale, like when we were at the running event last week, we were showing the fall 20 line. Right. So, so we'll, we're placing factory, you know, we're placing POs pretty quick here on that season. So once we place those POs, it's like, that's, that's what we produce and that's what we can sell. Um, so a lot of it, we've been pretty, um, just meticulous and diligent and like growing, you know, I commend you for growing your business like consistently. I think that's that's like when Jill and I started this, we were like, you know what? Part of this, there's a lifestyle piece to this too, you know? And I, you know, I want to be able to go do my run every day. I want to be able to leave and go do races. I want to be out in the community. I want to be able to come home and eat dinner with my family. Right. Um, so, so that is also a big part of the, you know, the formula <laughs> Um, as we sort of plan our budgets. Um, I, yeah. So in terms of scale, part of it is until this, until tw- the 2020 season, it, it was what it was because our timeline, we weren't on the right timelines. Um, so now like we, as we start what we call pre-selling, you know, we have, right. we can do better planning and inventory planning and things like that. Um, but yeah, I would say, we, we are, our MO is like to grow this in a way that there's a a good quality of life. And when I mean good quality of life, I'm not talking about financial. I'm just talking about as human beings and as mothers and family members. That's been, that's since day one, that's been ours. Like our, it's so, it's so easy to see businesses that just explode, they succeed, uh, they last for maybe three to five years, and then you sort of see them fizzle out or the brand mm-hmm. recognition isn't there. And there was something about that early on with Ginger Runner is like, I just want to build something slow and steady that is fulfilling mm-hmm. and allows both me and Kim to to like have a life, to, to not be yeah. chained to the nine to five and to, to all that, right? And I, I see that with Rabbit. I see obviously a lot of rep brand recognition because we are seeing it so often now, so frequently. But it also seems like it's being done in a way where it's still a brand that is small. It's still, you mm-hmm. know, a, how, how many team members do you have now? Oh, we're small. We have like 12 people. Wow. It's 12 people yeah. t- delivering on what appears to be a huge, <laughs> huge brand. So what you're, what you're doing... At least from the outside, it looks incredible. Whether or not you guys are running around the office every day, just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh we are, oh uh, we are. <laughs> but it, it has this sort of like, what a cool sort of ground roots brand. We have the co-founder on the show, mm-hmm. and it's it, it just hasn't gotten too big for its britches, and it's it's really really neat to see. Um, we have live questions, so Kim just pulled okay. some of those aside. Yeah, a question from Brian Sands in the chat room. Brian says, as a larger runner, size 2XL, I hadn't gotten a chance to try your shirts until Havelina when the raised shirt was offered in my size, and I love it. Any chance you'll be offering extended sizes on your website? Yeah, well, definitely. Um, we'll be looking at that for men. We did add women's XL in certain sizes, um, and so we'll be looking to do the same um, with men. Cool. I know that was a question that popped up with my gear of the year stuff and and even other times we've mentioned rabbit products is what sizes is it available in and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Another live question. Yeah, please. Sure. Uh, John in the chat room says, does Hoka contract with your company for all of its branded apparel? Um, We have done um, Hoka's 
fleet. Of- um, and we'll continue to work with Hoka on um, some special projects going going forward. But we have been working um, with them on the athlete gear. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like I saw yeah. Walmsley rocking one of the t-shirts at uh, like the Western <laughs> States ticket lottery or something like that. I was like, I think that's a rabbit shirt. So that is what that is. It's like some of the athletes. Yeah. Gear. So, mo- yeah. So I know they're, they're also um, starting to work on some of their own stuff mm. um, that will, you know, will kind of fill holes where they need help. And it, it's been a great, you know, obviously they're right down the street from us and um, we just have a great relationship with them. And then it's just been amazing to use their athlete you know, that their athletes are using the gear and giving us feedback, which is incredible, um, insights, you know? Um, so it's been great. Uh, what's the future hold for rabbit? So at this point, you're, you're a couple of years into this industry. Uh, you've obviously grown a lot. You have 12 employees now. Um, you're probably seeing if you're already planning for fall 20, you're on that timeline now where you're creating, uh, POs a, a year in advance. Uh, what's the future hold? Is there going to be a, a wider variety of products? Is there going to be innovation in any way? Where do you get to sort of like expand those muscles and, and grow? Yeah. So I think one of the things that Jill and I have always committed to was like, we don't want to just like create something to have a new something in the line. You right. know, it's always been like, you know, our product line is pretty tight and focused and, um, you know, it's things that we need and, um, that a retailer needs. Um, but I will definitely, we're excited next year. Um, we're launching our first high performance collection and we'll launch it around the Olympic marathon trials in Atlanta. Cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. It's all, um, laser cut bonded seaming. Um, it's all made in San Francisco. Um, so that will be coming out. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be doing some wool, um, definitely I would say the biggest opportunity for the brand on the product side is going into more of like the fall winter gear, mm. you know, obviously for us in Santa Barbara, <laughs> you know, we get in our own little hole of, of what cold is. Um, so that will, that's definitely going to be a focus for us. Um, and then just, uh, just like we constantly like to just improve, you know, fit, fit, fit. Like how can we com- improve? What other new fabrications can we use? Um, we don't need to, totally recreate the wheel um if it's not necessary so yeah we'll just continue to refine and then um yeah you'll see the high performance and then definitely um going into fall more kind of colder weather gear uh if you need to experiment in the pacific northwest to sort of you know <laughs> see what weather is like please we make do. A trip up. Yeah, yeah come on up here uh we'll show you some the Cascade Crest Trails alone are completely different right now compared to what they yes. are during race season. So <laughs> we'll take you on some of the course. We'll bring some skis. I want to um, <laughs> check. I want to check out the Tiger Claw. I've heard of it. I've, I've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> you've got to come and run it, and I'll be. I'll even put you on the spot now. But we need to collaborate on something, and if it's Tiger Claw, maybe we can make that happen. Yeah, let's um, do it. It's in May, right? It is in May, so <laughs> oh, I know yeah. that we need to. We basically would would need to start that. Now. six months ago but <laughs> <laughs> i know how it works um but before we get to uh sort of wrapping up the show i have a couple questions for, or at least one question left for monica uh but kim let's get to at least one more live question uh yeah darling runner pt in the chat room wants to know where can i find your apparel is it only online uh-oh oh did you oh. lose us uh let us know when you can hear us just give us a i hear you <laughs> Monica, let us know. <laughs> She'll be able to hear us in just a second. I know it. Skype is going to take a second. I can't hear you guys. Not Dude. yet. Oh, wait. There. You can, can hear you us. Hear okay, us? Wait, there. Okay. Great. Yes. Go ahead and ask. So wait, ask where, I, I heard, where can I find the apparel? In... Yes. yes. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't get the full question. Though. Yeah. They asked, where can we find your apparel? Is it only available online? Oh, no. Okay. So we are, if you go onto our website, runinrabbit.com. There is a retailer locator uh, link, and that will show all the running stores um, where we're sold. Yes, obviously on our own website, uh, we're in Running Warehouse. Uh, that would be the other big online uh, retailer. Uh, we there's still some live questions that we have. We'll ask those in the after show mm-hmm. for sure. I wanted to sort of finish this off before we get to the quickie question quiz by 
finding out more about your running, Monica, and what's next? Because oh, right. before the show, we had, <laughs> we had talked a little bit about... Like, oh, yeah, right. We were going to talk oh, about yeah. things Duh. like yeah. Avelina. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, really, like, I could just nerd out on gear. And that's the problem <laughs> is when we have someone who knows a lot about gear. Like, I have all these questions. Uh, I just wrapped up my very first 100-mile training week ever. I've run a 100-mile race before, but I've never done a <laughs> training week of 100 miles. You have done many... Are you training for something right now on a big scale? Are you doing any big races in 2020 or even before the end of 2019? Is there anything on your calendar that you're excited about? So I I will admit 2019 for me, racing was not my year. We just, it was like one thing after another came up. Mm. <laughs> um, so I was kind of bummed to be honest, but you know what? There were so many other amazing things uh, in my life this year. So I got over it, but I am going to do Rocky Raccoon. Yeah. That's next up. Yeah. So that's the first weekend in February. Now that I would not, you would not be able to call me a mountain crusher with that race. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So uh, Joe and I signed up for that first weekend of February. So I got to buckle down here. But it's funny because you, when you said that you were doing your hundred, well, first question for you was, did you think it was harder to do the hundred mile week or run a hundred miler? Run a hundred miler. Yeah. It was purely based the hundred mile week. Like I'm walking around totally fine today. I'm going to run again tomorrow. Like there's no time off after a hundred mile week. It's strate uh, uh, schedule wise. It was a nightmare. Like that was sort of where the big challenges were with yeah. at your days and planning your runs and do I have time to drive out and do 15 miles today to a trail or do I just stay in city? But the hundred mile race was, I mean, it just destroyed my body, not only for a week after the race, but for months after that. Yeah. So I've, I would say a hundred mile race. What would you say? Yeah, I definitely, I think so for sure. A hundred mile race. Have you linked yeah. up multiple hundred mile I, weeks though? Well, so it's funny when you did this. <laughs> okay, so the last like, okay, before I had kids, every year around the holidays, because pretty much this industry shuts down for two weeks. Right. And I would always, that would be my goal. I would run 100 miles during one of the weeks around the holidays. So then we started this thing <laughs> called Stupid Week. The last. <laughs> yes, I've already heard about I know. this. I know. Okay. So we would do, we do it every year through the store. It's just fun. Like we do, it's called stupid week. And I don't, there's probably ends up being like eight or 10 of us that do it. It's not very many people, but we start at new year's day and then we do it the first seven days of the year. Um, and we call it stupid week. I don't even know where that came up, but that's, <laughs> it sounds like a that's stupid what week. We, <laughs> you, do as, you do as many as you can, right? You do as many miles as you can. Yeah, the minimum you're supposed to do is a hundred. But then, like, I think we did prizes for bird for yeah. Stupid. And somebody, I think once, yeah, there was one guy. I'm trying to think. I I want to say he did close to two hundred. Wow. I know. As a mid packer, that was kind of the challenge. Was I uh, because it's my first hundred mile training week? I've gotten close. I've gotten the ninety three miles twice before, so it's uh, you know ninety three versus one hundred. That extra seven miles, I'm really mad right. I didn't do that earlier. <laughs> but the, as a mid packer, <laughs> there comes a point where just the time commitment. It really is just a lot of time running, and then uh, if you add like trails that, on top of that, you know, forget it. Did you yeah. do trails? I, I mixed it. Yeah. Did you do trails or flat? Both. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Are you okay? Not yeah, big it's a lot though. of time. A lot. A lot. A lot of laundry, a lot, yeah. like you said. <laughs> that was the other thing. I, I was hoping like I had enough gear to get through every day without having to do a wash. By day two, it was like, oh, I'm already out. <laughs> it's like, we need to do laundry in this house. Uh, well, I'm excited to sort of follow along with the running stuff too, Monica. Uh, Rocky Raccoon just looks awesome. I know that that race has put on incredibly well. We've had lots of guests. I think Ian Sharman runs it all the time. We've had him on before and uh that's exciting that'll be great yeah what are you so, gonna wear ah you know i have i i'll have to wait and see what the weather because it can be hit or miss it could, Always. you know i i want to say last year i think it like rained most of it mm -hmm. um yeah so year. we'll see we are going to wrap up this show but monica what a what a pleasure to have you on we really appreciate it and we appreciate what you guys are doing in the space uh 
two just champion female uh, co-founders creating a brand that creates really oh, good quality gear. Um, you're doing some really awesome things and uh, we're honored to have you on the show. It's just fantastic to have you. So thank you, Monica. I don't, did you lose us thank again? you guys i just oh, adore no. you both and you're just thank you for just your support oh of course hello no, there's a no i was just saying we're good. We're good. yeah yeah <laughs> i just adore, adore you guys and um it's always just so fun to see you and um thank you for just all of your support it's 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 amazing so we, we're really grateful for that awesome and you may not know this, but we do a thing here with our first time guests on the show. It's called the quickie question quiz. It is a rapid fire series of uh -oh. very simple questions. Uh, I realize that we're probably going to have to wait for Monica to connect to us. <laughs> Monica, you, oh when you see or hear us, you just give us a <laughs> thumbs up. We'll know that you can at least see and hear us. Okay. I can. Okay. 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 Great. Perfect. Yay. Perfect. So here's, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask a rapid fire series of questions. <laughs> Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, you say ready when we're ready and we'll go. Okay, I think I'm ready. Perfect. What was your very ready? first yeah. race? Uh, I think of 100 meter dash in like fifth grade or something at, at my, the track, the local track meet. Favorite place to run currently? Oh, man. Tunnel Trail in Santa Barbara. Road or trails? Trails. Bucket list race? Um, I, I want to do, well, I want to do the um, Le Templier in France next summer in that, August. That one looks awesome. Favorite running movie? Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Um, where dreams go to die. Hey, that's yeah, the first time that's anyone's answered correct correctly. Answer. That is the correct answer. <laughs> uh, guilty pleasure TV show. Oh my god, you guys! I do not watch. I literally I watch Shark Tank. <laughs> What's that's actually like it's quite so bad. fitting? Yeah, because a part of me is like, I wonder if she's gone on Shark Tank. Yeah. She would kill it on Shark Tank. Um. Favorite pre-race meal? What do you eat? Like, man, those people! Wow, they gave away. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> pre-race meal. I, I I like um pizza with no, veggie pizza with no cheese. Mm. Uh, favorite post-race <laughs> food? What do you eat right after a race? French fries. <laughs> That's my favorite food. Perfect choice. And <laughs> oh, finally, <yeah. laughs> what are your current running shoes? What are you running in? Um, I'm wearing the new speed Hoka speed goat for, and the new Hoka ring con for the road. Nice. Congratulations, Monica. You passed the quickie question. Woo! Yay. <laughs> uh, can you remind people where they can find you online, where they can find rabbit stuff? Uh, yeah. Let people know where they can find you. Okay. So, um, rabbit website is www.runinrabbit.com. Rabbit Instagram is run in rabbit. That is not our brand name. Everyone thinks it is our brand name, but we couldn't just get Rabbit. <laughs> so it's Run and Rabbit. Um, if you if you feel so inclined to follow me on my Instagram, it's um, very, very creative. It's Devree Mon, D-E-V-R-E-M-O-N. <laughs> awesome. Uh, a huge shout out to our wonderful guest tonight, Monica DeVries. We're going to have her join us for our after show uh, for our Patreon supporters. So if you have not already considered joining us at patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to all of our archived after shows. You get access to tonight's and future uh, for the rest of December. Uh, we appreciate all of our GR crew members who join us over there because it is how we make this happen. And, and if you are a Patreon member, there's going to be Patreon specific pricing for some of the Ginger Miss stuff. So Ginger Miss, if you are unfamiliar, is an annual tradition here. We've been doing it now. I believe this is going to be the sixth year of us doing Ginger Miss. It is a free to participate in extravaganza that is going to take place this coming weekend. Uh, essentially, what we do is a, uh, a running scavenger hunt where you get to collect pictures of items. You get to accumulate as many points as you can, and we just give away prizes thousands of dollars of prizes Big prizes we just got confirmation that we will in fact be giving nordic track 
brings it every year. And they've been on board with us since we were teeny tiny. <laughs> like for want, three or four years now, they've jumped in here. Uh, so we are going to be giving away a Nordic Track Commercial 2950 treadmill valued at, wait, let me make sure that that model number is correct. It is one of their treadmills. It's valued at $2,999, wow. uh, which is ridiculous. It's incredible what they're going to uh, join up with us to do. Um, I'll have the model number later. I'm realizing as I'm reading this, I'm like, I think that's it. Uh, but the 2950 <laughs> treadmill, uh, $2,999 value. That is the grand prize for Ginger Miss. And that is just icing on the cake. We've got stuff from Rabbit. We've got Patreon stuff from Rabbit. We've got uh, Hoka. We've got all brands are going to yep. be jumping in for Ginger Miss this year. We just love to give stuff away. Maybe a Tiger Claw entry. Maybe. And uh, we'll also be joined by Gary Claws next week. Gary Robbins will be joining <laughs> us during the Ginger Miss prize mm -hmm. giveaway. But if you want any info on Ginger Miss, follow across social media because that is where we're going to announce how you can sign up for it how you can get to be a part of it, how you can join in on the fun this weekend and win prizes. Um, we are also going to be talking a lot about it in the after show tonight. So yes. we're going to mention where you can go to sign up right now for Patreon members, and we'll talk more about the prizing. Uh, but that Nordic Track treadmill is fantastic because it has the iFit. Cool iFit. iFit technology, yeah. which is uh, it's the videos, it's the interactivity that is on that giant 22-inch screen on the treadmill where as you run, it like has video of running through the Grand Canyon or, you know, other destinations, and it will move the treadmill for you based off the terrain that you're running through. It's, it's I wish we had awesome. room for one. I also <laughs> wish we had room for one. Uh, too bad we're confined to a corner. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So Ginger Miss is coming up this weekend. Follow on Facebook, The Ginger Runner or Mile Long Legs. Twitter, The Ginger Runner or Mile Long underscore legs. Instagram <laughs> at Ethan Newberry. At Kimberly DT. And, I just need to make it difficult. Yeah, just make it difficult. <laughs> uh, but follow across social media. You will not want to miss out how you can join in to Ginger Miss. It's always so much fun. Yeah. We love it. We love the pictures. And it costs you it. nothing. It's free. It's yeah. free. Uh, it's free. It's our way of giving back to you guys. Because you guys support us year in and year out uh, for 12 months. It's the least we can do to sort of just give back. Um, okay, we're going to move into the after show with Monica. What am I free? Oh, my but goodness. First. But first, our final <laughs> segment of the night. Every week we recognize a member of the community who goes above and beyond, goes and breaks through a wall, crushes a goal. We call it our GR Crew Member of the Week. Uh, Kim, who is our GR Crew Member of the Week? Our GR Crew Member of the Week is Melanie Boltby. Melanie says, I ran the meh, that's M-E-H, marathon, marathon of endless hell, put on by crappy trails racing. All of this sounds amazing. <laughs> A bunch of foolhardy runners ran 100 laps on a 420-meter paved path around a baseball diamond. It was windy. The aid station sucked. We only changed running directions at the whim of the RDs. Fun was had. Misery was had. It was indeed a crappy trail race. I finished in 348.21. <laughs> I love all of this. First, congratulations, <laughs> Melanie, on being our GR crew member of the week. That's a it's a amazing. Congratulations to you. But also, I love this race format already. It's just called the Meh. Yeah, the marathon and put on by crappy hell. trails racing. I can imagine the aid station <laughs> literally has like sardines or something, and that's it, or milk. Stagnant puddle water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need to we need to do something like this. Uh, but go check out Meh because I already love it. I've never run it, but I already love it. That's it for tonight's show. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Ginger Runner Live, episode number 288. We'll see you next week for our final GR Live of the year with Gary Robbins. And it's we'll take be, a couple weeks off. We'll take a couple weeks off, yeah. as always, uh, for, for Kim and I to celebrate the holidays with our families. Um, but next week is our Ginger Miss giveaway. Get your box of wine ready. Oh, boy. It's going to be a doozy. <laughs> we'll see you in the after show in just a couple of seconds with our guest, Monica DeVries. Thank you, everyone. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.